Howdy, folks, and a welcome back to a little bit of a Ruby analysis. I guess it's of the of the intro for Volume Six. Michelle and I have already recorded the Volume Six Chapter One reaction, blind reaction. Both of us blind. Oh man, it was that was torture for twenty four hours <laughs> for a show up. Um, but we did have, have that recorded. Uh, it will be released as soon as it is publicly available on Rooster Teeth's site, and then I upload it, upload it, upload it. And then uh, Rooster Teeth has to uh, approve it, has to uh, let it let it through uh, the initial blocking, which I'm sure will happen. Uh, so you can expect it's probably going to be, I, I imagine there's going to be a lot of requests for uh, Volume 6, Chapter 1 videos on Rooster Teeth to, to clear. Um, so it, it could probably be late on Monday, might even be Tuesday uh, before it gets cleared. So look forward to it then. It's not going to be earlier than that. I thought about uploading it early and leaving it private and asking Rooster Teeth if they would clear it this week, you know, during the work week, uh, prior to it becoming public, but I didn't, I didn't want to push it, you know, <laughs> I didn't want to run the risk that they wouldn't believe me. <laughs> so uh, I'll upload it once it becomes public. So that means I'm probably going to upload it on Saturday and, uh, and then put in the dispute, put in the request and we'll let them clear it. So expect it Monday, late Monday or Tuesday at the latest. But I wanted to take a look at this intro video and talk to you guys about a few things because it's, it's available on YouTube. Everybody can see it. And uh, there's a few things in here that I think are pretty darn interesting. I think you guys think are pretty darn interesting too. Um, Michelle and I uh, um, uh, reviewed it and we reacted to it blind and we talked about it in the episode. So you'll see it then. But uh, just to start out with a little bit, cool intro uh, with, the, with the whole <laughs> Crescent Rose uh, expanding in all uh, her glory in different modes. Which is really cool. Rooster Teeth original series, a little more Crescent Rose, and Ruby, of course, shows up first. I mean, really kind of the lead of the show, right? Not, not a big surprise at all. This is all very uh, stylistic stuff. There's no real, nothing to really glean from this. Uh, they're all pretty much in their uh, regular outfits. Looks like Volume 5 clothing. Uh, in fact, Weiss doesn't even have the scarf, and I don't even think she has the leggings in this. I could be wrong. Um, then goes to the moon, which is which is solid here. I don't see a broken moon. Do you guys see a broken moon? Hmm, interesting. I think this ties into when we talked about the trailer. If you watch the analysis of the trailer on this site, I mentioned that I thought there might be some flashbacks into uh, previous incarnations of of, uh, uh, of Ozpin and things like that. I think we might be getting that. And I think this moon might be an indication of that because it's solid here. It's not broken. And then the Ruby logo, Volume 6, goes to dust, which is cool. I like the snow through the whole thing. Kind of giving the impression that we're going to be an atlas. And there goes there goes the moon, right? Um, so back up here. And then, kaboom! We're going to see an explanation about the moon, I think. I think that's what it's telling us. I hope. You know that the intros don't always... Uh, what you see in the intros don't always actually happen. And sometimes they're stylized versions tra trying to give you the impression or a mood or, or something like that an analogy for what's going to happen. We get uh, what's left of Team Juniper plus Crow plus Oscar, uh, which is pretty cool, of course. And, oh, Ren and Nora. Yes! Look at that. Look at that. Ren looking at Nora like that and Nora holding him like that. They're, they're, come on. After what happened at the end of Volume 4, they're a couple. You know they're. They've always really been, but they're, I think, more openly admitting it to each other now, so that's pretty awesome. What is Oscar reading? Atlas mechanics, like popular mechanics, I guess. <laughs> okay. Well, we know that Oscar, before he was with Ozpin, uh, was a farm boy and had to work with machinery and all sorts of things. So maybe that's one of the reasons why he's interested in essentially a popular mechanics magazine. That's pretty cool. Uh, of course, Crow is bored and tired. And John is very eager to go, very gung-ho. It's cool stuff. All right. Where do we go to next? Oh. One of a couple of a scenes between Jean and Oscar, which I think are going to play out a little bit later. We'll talk about that in a moment. <laughs> Just a funny little scene, all right? And then we get Ruby Weiss back together, passing by Blake and Yang back together. These are the original pairings, remember, from Volume 1 when they found the chess pieces. And, of course, the shot of Adam kind of overshadowing the two of them having a, a definite impact on both of them, uh, together and alone. And of course, they're on the train. That was a, kind of a theme of the first 
I wonder if they're going to get back on the train because it's in the intro. I wonder. But Crow and Ruby and the old lady. Which, you know, guys, I, I suspected in the trailer that the old lady might actually be a maiden. I think she's the winter maiden. I still do. Some people are saying the reason she's wearing the goggles is she's a, a, a silver-eyed warrior. I don't know. Well, I don't know. I think I think a maiden could have protected herself. Well, I'm not going to talk to. I'm not going to talk spoilers about volume one, uh, episode chapter one. <laughs> um, we'll talk about that in another video. But I still think she's actually the winter maiden. Now, I I, I wouldn't be surprised if she turns out to be a silver-eyed warrior. Um, here to, to help with Ruby because as you see oops you know you've got Ruby and Crow here and then she appears now that could be completely applicable if she's a silver eyed warrior or if she's a winter maiden you know all of this would be applicable so I don't know if it means anything really although we're going into the eyes and we're seeing Ruby which is why I wouldn't be surprised if she's a silver eyed warrior because it's it's going through her eye into Ruby's eye right so that kind of is telling you She's a silver eyed warrior, so I'm still holding out hope that she's a winter maiden. But I'm 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 I have to admit I think the evidence is pointing towards a silver eyed warrior. <laughs> All right, well Crow again drinking on the road. Oh, being grabbed by Grim. I wonder if that's symbolic of something. Lots of Grim, and then Grim going for her, for Ruby. Grim almost tentacles. Kind of creepy hentai stuff here. I don't know. <laughs> Weird. And then we get the most mysterious character. There is something weird going on here, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about who I think this is. And I, I'm also going to talk about maybe there's two people that look like this in this intro. There, we're seeing two people in these, these brown cloaks. I'm not sure. Notice in this shot... This, this person back here holding an umbrella. Okay. They're a character that used to kind of hold an umbrella. Well, there's there's one that had a cane. And his his right-hand person, his right-hand girl, if you will, had an umbrella or a parasol or whatever. And that would be Neo, right? Now, notice in this shot, umbrellas. Kind of symbolic. This person has two apparently human arms. I know there's some speculation this might be Cinder, but I can't. I guess that left arm might not be human. The right one clearly is. The left one might be in a glove or it might be a bone or something. I'm not sure. So maybe this is the one we saw in the second, but I still think it's going to be Neo. I think it's kind of a misdirect maybe, or maybe it's symbolic of two characters. Trying to, That's what I was getting at. Maybe trying to tell us that we're going to both see Neo back and as well as Cinder back. I mean, because, come on, Cinder's not dead. We didn't see the body. So you know she's going to make a, re a reappearance. Now, maybe Cinder, maybe this is, or Cinder, maybe Neo, um, after her little uh, um, incident, <laughs> running with Ruby, uh, ended up, you know, hooking up with uh, with Salem at some point and getting some, some uh, uh, grim replacements as well. I don't know. But that arm, we'll see in a second. Um, it's not the black one that Cinder had. And did Cinder, was it the left arm for Cinder? Uh, yes, I think so. Could be wrong. I think so. And then here is where I really think they're telling us this is Neo. Right? I'm going to go forward slowly. Look at that. Look at that bowler hat. That's Torchwick's hat. I mean, it's got to be Torchwick's hat. And she's looking at and who was more, more closely aligned with Torchwick? Not Cinder. Uh, Cinder used Torchwick, but Torchwick's partner was Neo. And I think this is Neo. I mean, that could be Cinder, but see, I'm not thinking that is. I'm really not. And then she's reacting. But you see also uh, the red come through, and here comes you know, Adam. And we get some Adam stuff, basically White Fang, Adam. We saw that in the beginning. He's got some issues with the White Fang clearly. And now we're getting a little bit of a hint that we're going to see some of our favorites come back as well. A little Tyrion, a little Hazel, a little Emerald, a little Mercury, Watts, and of course, Salem being the mastermind of all of it and very angry. 
I don't know what that's really telling us. There's candles in the background. Uh, this kind of cyan blue fog. I don't know what that could possibly mean. It might just be a cool transition. This one is interesting. Again, I talked about how I thought, based on the trailer, that we would get some flashbacks. I also speculated that the guy floating in the uh, in the coat, and you notice this guy's got the coat too, and the pants and the boots, very much like the guy floating, that that was a, uh, a predecessor, an ancestor of, um, of Ozpin, one of his earlier incarnations, one of his earlier hosts. And I'm thinking it is. I'm thinking this is a flashback to that, because look at the cane as well. It kind of really tells you that. And I also, in my crazy theories, and other people have had this theory too, I've, other people have mentioned it, um, that Jean might be a descendant of one of the original hosts uh, of Ospin. And, uh, and this might lend a little bit to that, because if that's the case, obviously that earlier descendant of, or earlier predecessor of Ospin um, had to have had, uh, or had a love interest, right? And maybe this had a child with this woman. And that child or children eventually led to um, Jean, you know? So that's why I'm thinking. Because I'm thinking Jean because, dun da da First of all, we get all of the clearly Ozpin predecessors here. I don't know if it goes back to the very beginning because there was a, a talk that he was, uh, obviously we know he's the wizard. Uh, some say he was the king uh, who, uh, who brought the peace to the world ended the war. We know that Jean's ancestry goes back to the war, and he's got some relics from then, from that time period. Here's some armor, kind of similar, not really, kind of similar, invocative, invocative of, uh, of, of uh, Jean's armor. Uh, but then we've got some other people back here that I don't know who they are, if we're able to meet them. I know they're, they're I think they're Ozpin hosts, but whether or not we're gonna know who they are through flashbacks, I don't know. And then we've got Ozpin turning into Oscar, and here is Jean. This is why I think we're going to learn about Jean's connection uh, at some point in this in this volume. I sure hope so. Uh, he's come and had him pretty angry. Now they could have chosen any character. If it's a case of Oscar slash Ozpin doing something that gets the team in conflict, which we pr predicted from the trailer because we saw the scene where the, the 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 Team Ruby was very upset with him, or seemingly upset with him. Um, so if there's conflict, it could have been any character. But why'd they pick Jean? I mean, he's not in the snow with him right now. He's on the train. So that's why I'm thinking we're going to get something else. And he seems very, very angry. We get some fighting. Sorry for the breaking up here. This is what happens when you try to go frame by frame with a, a tool with a viewer <laughs> on a video um, that isn't uh, well optimized. But uh, backing up, yeah, Crow fighting Grim. Okay. Um, not a lot I can discern from this other than it's just a, a cool little fight scene. But here is this hooded figure again and you'll note I don't know if we see it when we see it there it is uh, look at the left hand here the left hand looks skeletal right it looks like it's bone now this is why people are saying it's cinder but cinder's arm has black it's all black it's got all the way to the fingertips basically the fingers this is not black that's why I'm thinking it's still Neo. I mean, I can understand why people say it's Cinder because the sword looks very much like Cinder's sword. Um, some might say the fighting style is Cinder's, but Neo fights very much like this too. Although she's, you know, much more elegant about it. But uh, this fact that she's fighting, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, again, I can see why people say it's Cinder, but I'm also thinking Neo. Maybe it's too. Maybe it's representing both of them. You know, saying some villainesses are back or something so I don't know um, trying to get this to not break up again so there's a little fight we don't really see uh, who for sure it is uh, again looks a bit more fighting style for Cinder than Neo but again I don't know. the arm doesn't look like Cinder and you got the you get the bowler hat too what does that mean some more fighting the team showing them in unison doing all their stuff this is more just kind of showing the team together again nothing I don't think to really draw from this other than there's gonna be some cool fights and then these two these two are together they're showing the the pairings essentially which is scary if you're a bumblebee uh, shipper I guess if they're showing the pairings because <laughs> uh, Blake and Yang are back to back uh, separated by uh, uh, Ruby and Weiss uh, in the in the frame so 
Um, hmm. Don't know, but you do have Jean and uh, and Oscar next to each other, which is interesting. And then there's the lady. She's she's there, of course. I love Ren and Nora in the background. Yes, I'm a Ren Nora shipper. Um, but the old lady, so she's clearly going to be uh, an important character in this volume at least, or maybe moving forward in general, for her to be on this final kind of title card thing here. Pretty big, pretty big. Right, I don't know if you can read much out of that, but series created by Monty. Thank you, Monty. Thank you very much. Anyway, guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed that little little discussion of what, what was in the intro. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are or what you think those things mean. Is it Neo? Is it Cinder? Um, is Jean a descendant of, of Ozpin? Are we going to find that out? Um, are we getting flashbacks? Was the guy floating and hovering in the, in the, in the coat? That guy who we have a statue of and is that Ozpin? All the stuff I talked about. Let me know what you think. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.